how's it going? Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Docker. Now, I know it's been a while since I posted a video and that's because, you know, I've been going through a lot of research, a lot of changes in my personal life. Uh, I can tell you a little bit about it and one of the things that I have done is I have quit my job. And basically the whole reason why is so that I can focus 100% uh, on Codemy and Artelectual, which is uh, the company that I've started. And uh, the point is, you know, you know, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. And now I have the opportunity to do it, to completely focus my attention on building uh, Codemy and, and follow my vision um, and build an entirely new team, uh, you know, to in order to, to realize the, the vision for the company. And, and what the vision is, it's, you know, is for, for another video. Uh, I'll be telling you guys more about what's coming up um, in another video. But in this video right here, we're going to be focusing on a Docker. Um, there's a lot of research that I've done over the past three months uh, on Docker. You know, I've been hearing so much about it. And, you know, I'm very, very excited to tell you guys all about Docker. There's a lot of web technology out there, not just web technology, but, you know, just technology in general, like programming, software engineering, and all that stuff. And they all have different needs and different programming languages and different development environments. One of the key things about Docker is it's, it provides consistency. Uh, so basically, you know, when you're deploying your code into production, uh, you don't have to worry about the different environments. The developer, you as a developer, take care of building the container. Uh, so what, what Docker is, is it's, it's a container technology. And so you build this uh, container. I'll go a little bit more into detail about what a container is. But um, the idea is you build this environment and then you package up into a box. Let's just keep it that simple. You package it up into a box and then you ship it somewhere, right? You don't care how it's shipped. As a developer, your job is to create this box that is a contained environment and you know that this, it, this box has everything that's needed for your software to run successfully. Uh, and, and that's all you care about, right? So that's one thing it provides is like isolation and you know you can just, you as a developer can control the environment that your software runs in. Now, when you have that kind of separation, it creates a lot of consistency because now whoever is handling that box doesn't have to care about what's inside that box. All they have to do is take the box and put it somewhere and the box knows exactly what it needs to do. It's kind of like an executable on Windows or a DMG file on, on Mac where you, you have a file, you double click and it just runs, right? It knows what to do. Same kind of idea. With that out of the way, the next thing we wanna talk about is, um, you know, there's a lot of applications as well because of that consistency. There's a lot of applications that are published and you can check out the Docker Hub. So if you just Google Docker Hub, you find all kinds of applications that people have made that you can just reuse, which is great because now you don't have to redo all the work that the people have done. You can just you know take whatever you want and then put it in your environment and connect it up with your app and then you're good to go. So for example, if you have a Rails app and your Rails app depends on a Redis database or a Postgres database, you don't have to set up Redis or Postgres anymore. There's already boxes uh, pre-built by other people that you can just use and connect to your app, which is awesome, right? So it, it makes things a lot more uh, uh, efficient, which leads us next to the, the next point. But let's say, for example, in a production environment, you would have a database uh, on one, um, you know, on one node, on one VM, uh, or and then you would have another, um, you know, a Rails app your Rails app actually running on a separate VM. So for example, in DigitalOcean, you would boot up two VM, one's a database and one is the your Rails app. Or if you have you know, multiple Rails app, then you have the other database separate for your other app and then you have your other you know, VM running your other app. But what that you know, entails is you know, inefficient use of resources because now you, because you know, everything's all muddled up in the VM, because it's not containerized, it's not like isolated, um, you know, it's very difficult to kind of like keep multiple apps on one VM, right? So, you know, how do you deploy, you know, multiple Rails app in a single VM? 
Well, you know, with Docker, you can do that, right? You can share resources across your um, your machines. So you can have one machine and you can have, you know, three Rails apps, you know, depending on how big that machine is, you can have three Rails app running in there, four Rails app running in there. Um, so it's a lot more efficient uh, to use Docker, you know, in order to, to create the environment that you want. So the next thing I want to talk about is scalability. Now, you know, basically because each container is self-contained, let's say for example, you have a process that is running for a long time. It's doing like a lot of number crunching, very heavy uh, processing. Uh, it's super, super easy when you use Docker because Docker uh, has certain conventions. Like for example, you want to make your container stateless, which means now, you know, the state is now stored completely outside of your container. And this follows a lot of the stuff that Heroku has has done uh, with the 12-factor uh, application. So uh, I'll have links about all this stuff, you know, below in the description. Uh, and basically what that does is now, let's say, for example, you have a, a node or a container running, you know, some heavy computation and it's taking data from the database. The state is stored in the database. So now if you say, hey, you know what, I want to boot up more of these containers so I can finish my job faster, you can do that with Docker. So you just boot up five or six or whatever, uh, you know, hardware can support. And then it'll, they'll all be doing the number crunching for you, the same number crunching on different data sets. So scalability is extremely easy. Or if you have a web node and, you know, all of a sudden you get a lot of traffic, you can scale up very, very easily with Docker. Uh, you know, you just say, hey, you know what? I want three of the web containers because I expect a lot of traffic coming through. You can do that super, super easily. So, you know, this may sound like a lot of the features that Heroku has, and that's because the technology behind Heroku is very, very much the same. Uh, it's container-based uh, system. And so, you know, the past three months, I have been digging deep into how Heroku do has done things and I have been plugging gaps in, you know, like trying to use open source to build basically my own Heroku. And, uh, you know, the, the reason for that is because I've been working on a project and it's a very exciting project. I'll tell you guys all about it later. Uh, so this project is a little bit special because it does a lot of number crunching and, you know, needs a lot of storage. And I, I had to basically design a whole new architecture to support this application. Otherwise, if I used Heroku, I would be paying through my teeth and I'd, I'd be out of money, basically. Um, so, you know, it, it was, you know, out of necessity that I had to learn Docker and understand, you know, how this works and be able to design, create my own uh, infrastructure and architecture and workflow uh, to be the most efficient and cost effective. And what I want to do is share my knowledge uh, with you guys about Docker. Uh, so in the next upcoming videos, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create Docker containers. Um, you know, what are all the elements that are, you know, inside of, uh, of this Docker universe? Uh, you know, Docker is just one part of it. It's a central core part of it. But there are other parts that link, that make all this, you know, work well together. Uh, so in the next video, I'm going to be showing you the setup that I have. Uh, you know, I'm using all kinds of crazy open source tools. And, you know, the, the folks behind these open source uh, tools are, are really, really cool. I'm going to have links to all of them uh, in the description below. So check that out. And uh, with that out of the way, I'm going to wrap it up for this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.